Hello everyone, this is Mario, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the final few stages of the Giro d'Italia 2023 on Pro Cycling Manager. This is the end, my cycling friends, the end. Things didn't really go our way in the previous one, Thibaut Pinot wasn't at the same level as the other GC contenders, Bruno Armirail barely scored any points for the mountain classification and Jake Stewart lost the lead in the points classification. But today we are going to try to remedy that. We are going to start with a really hard stage with 5,000 meters of vertical ascent, and then on stage 20, the final GC day with a much anticipated mountain time trial. And then the final stage in Roma will be very much like the Champs Elysees stage of the Tour de France. So today we have two riders in the breakaway, Rudy Mollard and Vandenberg. I did not take Bruno Armirai today because he's on a zero race day condition, so very hard for him to take any mountain points and I would just be wasting his energy. The goal with Rudy Mollard at the front is basically just to have him up the road so he can help Thibaut Pinot later on and Pinot is on a plus one. It's not amazing but um, maybe he can try to do something today. So we haven't even reached the first climb yet but the pace in the peloton is actually pretty pretty high i'm not really feeling comfortable with that the group at the front in the breakaway initially had 16 riders only 11 left vandenberg is now done okay great so while i wasn't looking rudy Mollard got dropped with a few others in the breakaway really good really good the good thing here is that warren bargui is not really feeling great either so he's not going to take that many points in the mountain classification. It's now no longer Jumbo Visma setting the pace, it's Bora and UAE. Actually, which wall made a really at the front. Are we going to see something similar to what he did in real life and see a, an attack by him? This is putting Pino in a tough spot. So many riders being dropped in the peloton and we are right at the back of it look at this look i am going at 89 with thibaut pinot Armira is done and now it's rudy mollard again protecting let's have kung on the wheel of thibaut. of thibaut this is really insane 40 riders left only what is wrong with this stage okay things have calmed down ah come on no 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 i don't want bargui to take the points Armira is still leaving two points only ahead of Warren Bargui. We are starting the Paso Giao. It's 10 kilometers at 9.2%. Okay, so halfway through the climb, the pace seems to have dropped a little bit. So maybe they are not as strong as I thought. Up the road, we only have Jack Haig and Vadim Pronsky. Big surprise with Pronsky there. But these 37 men that make up the peloton are about to catch them. Okay, so the pace is low. I am going to try something. We are three kilometers from the top of the Paso Giao. I'm going to attack with Stefan Kung and then try to... Oh no, Bargui is coming. That is definitely not what I want. Let's go with Thibaut now. Let's try to link up with Stefan Kung. And let's go up the road no one is following at the moment let's maybe lower this a bit 1.8 kilometers to the top are they upping the pace now it's magnus court magnus freaking court is the one pacing here ah bargi is taking the points that is far from ideal i don't want to push too much because there's still 40 kilometers left in the stage yeah, Bargui is going to take the Malazura. Okay, maybe this wasn't a really good idea. We have about a 30 second lead over the, over the peloton, which really isn't that much. And I couldn't really go harder in the downhill because at some point, Stefan Kung actually dropped Thibaut Pino. Ah, was this a mistake again? We are now in the Paso Tre Croci with again a really tough pace and Kung has so much energy because of his plus five. I'm trying to give it all with him to help Thibaut Pinot staying here. 
Still 15 riders and Magnus Court is still in the group. Like, I love Magnus Court, but I am getting so annoyed with this. And Vlasov is being dropped, that is big. Joel made on the attack, followed by Evanapool, then Roglic trying to get, get back to them. I have... I really can't do this with Thibaut. I need to lower the, the pace. Maybe let's put him on the effort cursor with Kung protecting. But um, yeah, this, this was terrible. Okay, we got back to the main group where Lorenzo Rota attacks again. So they all stopped pacing. As we enter the Tre Chime di Lavaredo, the first part of the climb is not really a climb. And Vlasov is back in the group as well. So basically everyone stopped pacing. McNulty now pacing for João Almeida. The Portuguese is going to try it again for sure. But the first one to attack is Hugh Carty. I think he's almost 4 minutes behind me in the GC. He's currently 8. So I'm not really worried about him. And Lorenzo Rota. He got a really big advantage. And Evanapool is the one attacking with João Almeida going on the wheel. Roglic trying to get back to them. Let's use the energy gel and Pinot. I need to lower my effort and just go at my own rhythm until the end. Gegenart is done. So it's Carthy, Almeida, Avenapool and Roglic. Then a group dropping Theo Gegenart. Gegenart third in the GC is being dropped. Caruso is being dropped. Oh, ah, but I won't have enough to... Gain a lot of time on him. Lorenzo Rota got caught. It's going to be between João Almeida, Primoz Roglic and Remco Evenepoel for the stage win. Roglic probably has this. In the meantime, at the back, we are gaining some time on Gegen Art and, crucially, on Damiano Caruso. And in the slowest sprint ever in a Giro d'Italia stage, the winner is... João Almeida ahead of Primoz Roglic and then Remco Evenepoel. Rota is going to finish fourth ahead of Hugh Carthy. Then Kung, Sivakov and Thibaut Pinot. Gegenart didn't lose that much time. Caruso lost a little bit more. Where is Vlasov? Ooh, that was a really bad day for him. And so that is the first win for João Almeida in this Giro d'Italia. Finishing on the same time as Primoz Roglic, 15 seconds ahead of Remco Evenepoel, Thibaut Pinot 4.55 down. I was definitely not expecting to lose that much time with him, but I can see this as a positive. We actually gained time on Teo Gegenart and Damiano Caruso, better climbers than, than Thibaut Pinot, and both with better recovery stats, so I'm actually happy. Vlasov losing 6.26. So about a minute and a half behind Thibaut Pinot. I wouldn't say this was a, a bad performance by me. What this means for the GC is that Primoz Roglic is still in the lead, but now ahead of João Almeida, the new second. Pemko Evenepoel down to third, then Theo Gegenart and Vlasov. As for Pinot, he is 1.23 down on Caruso. With a good day in the time trial that is coming in the next stage, maybe he can jump to sixth. And let's just mention Magnus Court again. He is still in the top 10. This stage brought no changes to the points classification, but unfortunately it did change the mountain classification. It's still a Frenchman in the lead, but unfortunately not the Frenchman I wanted to be there. That said, there is still a glimmer of hope for Bruno Armirail. If he wins the time trial, there are 40 points for the mountain classification and he may eventually take the win. It's not gonna happen. So Thibaut Pinot is now on the road, he's on a zero race day condition, so again, it's very unlikely that he's going to be able to do anything special today. Kung is on a plus two. This time trial is so, so damn complicated. My first rider today, Leinard, is currently 12 minutes and 25 down on Rowan Dennis. So Kung has the best time in the first intermediate checkpoint. Thibaut Pinot is losing 58 seconds, he's of course conserving a bit of energy in this section, but now up his efforts, up to 77 already. So Armirai is reaching the top, he is not going to win it, and again I didn't really manage this the way I should. Let's up the effort a bit with Kung now, maybe with Pinot up to 78. Yeah, Armirai 
322 down. That was really poorly managed. So in the second intermediate checkpoint, Kung was already losing 57 seconds. The best time there was by Magnus Court. Of course. Of course it was Magnus Court, right? It had to be. Pino now approaching the second checkpoint with Caruso almost catching him. He's losing 118. Am I going too slow? Let's up the effort with Pino a bit. Uh, again, I think I'm being too conservative. I think I am being way too conservative. Let's go with Stefan Kung to the line. And he is going to finish 129 down, 22nd. Best time up to 85. Let's see. How is Caruso being this fast? And Vlasov has the best time in the second checkpoint. Caruso is overtaking Thibaut Pinot. What the heck is happening here? This is freaking unreal. And I think I'm actually managing it decently with Thibaut. And Vla... Are we losing four minutes to Vlasov today? This is surreal. Caruso gets the best time, then beaten by one minute by Vlasov. Pinot loses... 247, so not as much as I thought. So Evanapol is next. He was 18 seconds down on Vlasov in the final checkpoint. And he's seconds, 24 seconds down. Then Theo Gegenhardt losing quite a lot of time, doing worse than Pino, 254 down. And then Joel made only 15 seconds down on Vlasov. But the lead of Primoz Roglic is more than enough to take the GC win. 27 seconds down on Vlasov. In the time trial, Vlasov wins the stage. João Almeida, Evanapul, Roglic and Caruso complete the top five. Magnus Court is sixth in this time trial. This is ridiculous. As for my riders, Kung is only 33rd and Thibaut Pinot is only 35th. Two minutes and 48 down on Vlasov. We still beat Theo Gegenhardt. Okay, let's go. And so after this one, I think the only change in the top 10 was that Vlasov overtook Theo Gegenhardt and he is now fourth. Pino is still seven and is going to stay there unless there is a crash in the final stage, which I hope doesn't happen. Going for the final stage, my riders feel as fresh as a rotten tomato. And starting the final stage, the mood in the team seems to be like the weather. Pretty dark, pretty rainy, very stormy. They are towards the back of the peloton really shows that this was not uh, a great final week for them. So the stage today is really nicely made with the Colosseum here and a few other monuments and a lot of really cool looking buildings of the center of Rome. My computer, however, doesn't really like this stage because it is struggling to process it. If you notice any lag or any frame rate drop. I apologize for that. So we currently have six riders in the breakaway. Interestingly, two Israel riders and two Astana riders. So they are going to take most of the intermediate sprint points. There are only going to be two and one points for the top two riders in the peloton. I don't think it's worth it to go for them with Jake Stewart. And I'll try to give it all in the final sprint. And so we are now about 19 kilometers from the finish line. I have already assembled my sprint train, still trying to get into a good position, but the pace has been so, so hard. There has been a split in the peloton um, caused by the pace and also by multiple crashes that already happened. In the intermediate sprints, we have Patterson getting three points and Michael Matthews only one. So I'm not really concerned about not going for the intermediate sprints. There's still a chance for winning the Malia Ciclamino. If Jake Stewart wins the stage and Michael Matthews fails to be in the top three. Okay, we are getting close really fast and maybe I have too big of a train because there are so many corners here. Yeah, I need, ooh, I need to go for... Oh, are we going to even be able to contend for the stage? Because we are still 30 seconds behind two riders. Luis Leon Sanchez and Mikel Cherel. Oh, they are going to take the stage. I was not expecting this. Let's start sprinting with Kung. We are not going to win the stage. Let's go with Leinard now. There are so many corners. This is so tricky. This is so tricky. Let's go with Jake Stewart. Can we take the stage win? 
We are not taking it. It's Luis Leon Sanchez taking the win ahead of Leinard. Who had a terrible Giro d'Italia. All the three weeks and then he finishes with the second place in the stage. Jake Stewart fifth only. We lose to Mats Pedersen. So I think Michael Matthews, who finished 12th only, is still going to win the Malia Ciclamino. And so Luis Leon Sanchez wins the final stage in Rome, making it a success for the breakaway, totally unexpected. Fabian Leinard was the best in the sprint. Yeah, those final corners really hurt me. But yeah, I mean, we beat Magnus Court, so... Hey, that's something. The final GC is then confirmed. Primoz Roglic wins the Giro d'Italia and makes it four Grand Tours for him. João Almeida with a podium for the first time in his career, being second, 19 seconds ahead of Remco Evenepoel. Then Vlasov and Gegenhardt completing the top five, followed by Damiano Caruso, Thibaut Pinot, Hugh Carthy, Magnus freaking Court Nielsen and Pavel Sivakov in 10th. And surprise, surprise, Mats Pedersen, with his final third place finish in that chaotic sprint, managed to get enough points to overtake Michael Matthews in the points classification, and he will take the Maila Ciclamino home. And Jake Stewart, with an admirable third place finish, 184 points, 20 behind Mats Pedersen. And no, it wasn't because he finished second behind Kung in that sprint stage because that would be only 15 more points for him. Bruno Armirail had some goated moments, he was leading the mountain classification for so many stages, but in the end, Warren Barguy was simply stronger and took the Maila Azura. João Almeida was the best young rider in the race, 19 seconds ahead of Remco Evenepoel. We had an overall good performance with Grupa FDG finishing as the 6th best Movistar, I mean team, but the team's classification goes for the Ineos Grenadiers. And so that is it. This was the Giro d'Italia 2023. These final two videos in the final week were not really good in terms of results for my team. Poor race day conditions, bad recovery stats by some riders, but it is what it is. I had so much fun playing this, even though I didn't win, I didn't even get the top five that I wanted to take. But there were, of course, some positives. We led both the points and mountain classifications for a good number of stages. We have three stage wins, first with Thibaut Pinot, then with Jake Stewart, and then with a really special sprint win by Stefan Kung. So I'm actually pleased with how this went. I hope you have enjoyed this bumpy ride. And if you enjoyed this last video, please leave a like down below. Also, leave me a comment if you wish to share your opinion. Don't forget to check the description of the video for links for my socials. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, you are more than welcome to do so. So as I mentioned before, I expect to soon bring you a new series already on PCM 2023. Stay tuned for that. And that is all for today. As usual, stay safe, stay positive. Until next time, goodbye.